boshka sata dada boshko soto de boshka sata. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great day. We thank you for this great month of productivity in July. We thank you for 2020, our year of perfection. We thank you, Lord, for your word is building us up. We thank you for your Holy Spirit lives in us, guiding us. We thank you that our hearts and minds are opened, ready to hear the word, ready to welcome the word, ready to understand the word, ready to do the word without delay, knowing fully well we are more interested in our success than we could ever be. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to today's service. It's good to have you in service. And I just encourage you, or rather, I just remind you that uh, you are in service. God is watching you. You are doing the right thing by being in service. I encourage you to send the link right now and encourage your friends, your relatives, and even your enemies to also connect on this live Sunday broadcast of this service. It's a wonderful time we've been having and we'll continue to have a wonderful time. And um, I would encourage you, even though you're online, wherever you are, maybe on your own or with your friends or with the family or whoever else you might be, be serious, pay attention. God is talking to you. If you want to say amen, you say amen. If you want to jump and shout, you jump and shout. Pay attention, take notes and revise notes after the service. Today is part seven in this series, focus on the word. Focus on the word. And um, our main scripture reading is just start off with Romans 12, verse 2. And I read it to you from the Amplified Bible. Like Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It is written Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs by being transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. Another major scripture for us was, read that now, is... Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. We'll read it you from the Amplified Bible Classic as well. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. And all of us with unveiled face, because we continued to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured into his very own image, in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Hallelujah. And in both those scriptures that we just read to you, Romans 12, verse 2, and uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, the Greek word uh, translated transformed uh, in those verses is metamorpho, spelled M E T. A M O R P H O O, metamorpho. And um, it's got three meanings. Number one means to change, to make different. That's the first meaning. Number two, metamorpho means to transfigure. To transfigure. To transfigure is to change something into, into, to make something more beautiful, more elevated, to promote it. Hallelujah. And the uh, third meaning of metamorpho is transform. To transform means there's a marked change. There's a change in nature. There's a change in nature. Hallelujah. And now, in those verses, we've covered this in the previous series, I would encourage you to go, to go onto our YouTube channel. The link is showing on your screens right now. And go through the entire parts from the very beginning. And um, you'll be able to watch them. And um, they have the same titles in the series, focus on the word. Now, just greater summary from last week, to pick it up from here, is that, say the Greek word translated is what? Metamorpho. So Apostle Paul is in both instances where uh, he was telling Christians you know, to make Christians, the Christians in, the Roman Christians, the Christians in Rome, and the Christians in Corinth was letting them know how to make progress. 
Okay, they must be transformed, metamorphosed. They must be changed. They must be transfigured. How? Through the word of God. So it covered many aspects. And he said one of the great ways to explain the process of metamorphosis is to look at the, where we get the English word metamorphosis. English word metamorphosis. And we have looked at how insects go through metamorphosis. There are two types of metamorphosis. There's what's called incomplete metamorphosis, and that is the typical process that, that grass, insects like grasshoppers and cockroaches go through. It's called incomplete metamorphosis. And the key thing that when the young ones are hatched from the egg, they look adult-like, all right? So they just grow, in others, they just grow to become a full adult, but they look adult-like from the very beginning. Maybe their wings will grow or the legs will grow. And uh, you see, they move with one grace, I mean, you know, with one grace. And it's called incomplete metamorphosis because they're the same type throughout, all right? They are one grace uh, uh, breed, if you want to say that, okay, in terms of capacity. You said that in, uh, in terms of the Christian walk, because they, the way they start, they don't really change much to the way that they end. And... Uh, because there's a Christian like incomplete metamorphosis. It's not complete. See, it's like someone who's born again, he talks Christian like, all right, you know, but uh, doesn't, you know, they don't produce much results in their lives. They don't have, much, they don't have impact in their lives. You no, know, grasp Christians. And I'm not going to go through that. You can go through what we covered last week, Sunday, in Force on the Word, part six. It would greatly bless you. And then we also started looking last week, Sunday, in complete. Metamorphosis. He said complete metamorphosis. So Apostle Paul says complete metamorphosis. Okay. That's the direction that we must go in. See, you must go in the direction of complete metamorphosis. And said insects that go through complete metamorphosis, insects like butterflies. And we started looking at the process of uh, development of the butterfly and how it helps us to understand in terms of um, in terms of how to, to change we've already looked at how the butterfly lays an egg on a particular leaf and um, you know and when that when the egg hatches or rather butterflies lay their eggs on on one type of leaf and when the eggs hatch they produce the larva which in butterflies is called a caterpillar and um, Though the egg is very small, and though the egg can, um, and though the larva starts off very small, the larva has capacity to grow, and the larva is its business is to eat the leaf on which it was on which the egg was laid. So it's important for the butterfly to lay the the egg on the right leaf, because once the larva comes out, it's programmed to eat the leaf on which. It, it, it finds itself where it started, where it was hatched from the egg. So if it eats leaves of a different type of plant, it will die. So it's very important that the butterfly lays the, its eggs on the right type of leaf. And we saw that very great depth last week Sunday, how in terms of, um, in terms of developing as a, as, a, as a caterpillar or in the larva stage, how the caterpillar will will shed its skin several times, all right? Some will shed their skins four or five times, and there's some that will shed their skins even a hundred times, and um, say that each species of butterfly caterpillar, each caterpillar is for a particular species of butterfly, and it will shed uh, its skins according to the species. So it's got a specific, each species has got a specific assignment, and um, although the egg is so small of a butterfly, the larva starts off very small. It can grow, some larva can grow many times the size, the size of the egg, even nine times even more. And it showed that in, from God's word perspective, you see, when Paul is saying, be transformed, be metamorphosed, go be metamorphosed, right? It means that you need to change, you see. What do you eat? Very clear, Jesus told us what we eat. Matthew 4 verse 4, that men shall not live on bread alone, 
but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So it's important for us to understand as a Christian, you need to feed on God's word. Like right now, you're in service, you're feeding on God's word. And that's very important. So when you feed God's word and uh, you grow, okay, and you said very clearly, the process of, of metamorphosis in the butterfly of metamorphosis, of the process of complete metamorphosis, you, you live in definite stages. The beginning form, what has, what's has out of the egg or the butterfly, is not the same form as the, that of an adult butterfly. The form is different at every stage. Showing us very clearly, in complete metamorphosis, you live, you live in stages. You live from one level of glory to a higher level of glory. So the more of God's word you, 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 you feed on, hallelujah, the more you're going to grow. So you have a responsibility to grow your faith. And we covered in great depth and we made it sure very clearly that the shedding of the skin by the caterpillar, butterfly, butterfly caterpillar in that stage, in that lava stage, um, is it really is specific to each butterfly species. And uh, that's something that God ha has for you. You go to get stage your body. There will be no growth, no capacity increase, no ability to go forward if you don't feed on enough of God's word. Very important. So many people, uh, their lives are stagnant because they are not feeding on, on, on God's word enough. And many are feeding on wrong doctrines. You see, we told you, like in these days, whereby there's so many preachers and so many ministers online on, on so various social media platforms. That is good for the purpose of the gospel. But you find that even preachers are at different levels of grace, different levels of understanding of scripture. And um, you might get confused. You know, you've got to be very careful. Just because someone is called to be a pastor does not mean they are spiritually mature. And just because somebody has got very large numbers in terms of following, doesn't mean that they are spiritually mature. You see, you've got to understand that there's a leaf that makes you grow from one level of glory to the next so you can fulfill God's destiny for your life. Hallelujah. Now, with that, for a summary, you, you need to go and watch Focus on the Word Part 6. So it will really bless you mightily. Like I said, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. The link is on your screens right now. You'll be mighty transformed. Hallelujah. Stagnation is not your portion. Now, we pick it up today in the stage now, stage three, in the process of what? Complete metamorphosis. You see, you need to have completion in your life. All right. Remember stage one for complete metamorphosis in the, in the process of metamorphosis of the butterfly. Stage one was the egg. Stage two is the lava or caterpillar. Stage three is the pupa stage. Now, and that's where you're going to go forward from now. Hallelujah. And last week Sunday I posed the question, how do you know that it is time to shift from being in the lava or caterpillar stage to the pupa stage in the process of, of complete metamorphosis? And how does it apply in terms of our understanding of scripture? Well, you see, you need to understand that in life, you must not be stagnant. You must be making progress, living from a level of glory to a higher one. In church, more importantly, you must not remain at the same level. <laughs> See, you need to increase in rank in church, grow in grace, be promoted in church. You see, you, you start off with the responsibilities will be given to you and be promoted in the house of God. So the house of God is quite interesting. See, the house of God, you know, you are promoted according to spiritual knowledge and out, outperform you. You see, somebody can have a chief executive officer of a large corporate and might even employ a house helper who might not even have any qualifications, academic qualifications. But in the house of God, she can be so serving and have grown spiritually such that they can be senior to the chief executive officer who is their boss at home and to be a test of the humility of the CEO. So understand, you must be promoted as of God. Don't remain at the same level. Aspire to be promoted. It's amazing. When people are working in their workplaces, they desire to be promoted. But many have been deceived by Satan 
and they don't want to be promoted in the house of God. <laughs> in heaven, there's no corner for CEOs. <laughs> in heaven, you start off from the spiritual level, you finish off in this earth. So, just be careful. Hallelujah. So, we move into phase three now. We complete metamorphosis for the butterfly. And that's a change from a caterpillar to a lava. Sorry, from a caterpillar to pupa. How does the caterpillar know that it has reached its stage? How does the lava know that it's, the caterpillar know that it's time now to shift to the next stage to become a pupa in the development process? No problem. Let's go to Scripture, Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. The Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. See from the scripture, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Very important from that scripture. What do we see? All right. How did it say that? Well, there's a time. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If it's a lamp, see, a lamp will show light, you know, close range where you are. All right? So if there's darkness, the lamp will show light on a small area around you, depending on the size of the lamp. You see? So if a Kenyan lamp, it's not a big light. All right? It's not a big light. It shows light around your feet. No, the scripture says, your word is a lamp to my feet. To two parts. Notice here. Bring up the verse again. Watch. It shows us two parts. Okay, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet. So it provides light for the feet and a light to my path. Very important. So that you're able to see where you place your feet. And also able to see the path, the direction you're following. You see, it says a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So you can see that there is a particular path you've let you follow to a particular destination. And the word is a lamp to two things, the feet. So you can place your feet in the right places and you can follow the right path. Very important. So you see, in that stage, in the caterpillar stage, right? The caterpillar must stay on the right leaf, all right? It must keep on eating the right leaf. It must keep on going in the right direction, in the right path. So it's from one leaf to the next. Leaf of the same kind. There's a particular direction. So there's a direction must follow. So the word of God, if you feed on the word of God, what are you doing? You are, you are bringing light to you. Now the scripture they said, the word is a lamp, showing one lamp. You see, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, what is this, what is this telling us? In life, hallelujah, let's go into, if you give us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, in the Amplified again, if you chapter 2, verse 10. It says, says, For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand, for us taking parts which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now notice here, we are God's own handiwork. You are born again. His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us. Taking parts, you see, which he prepared ahead of time. You see, there are parts which God prepared ahead of time for each and every one of us to take. There are different parts. Bring it up again. Different parts. Hallelujah. That we should walk in them. That we should what? Walk in them. So the parts are prepared for us to walk in them. Parts prepared for us to walk in them. Hallelujah. And if we walk, if we follow those parts, what happens? You will live the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. He didn't prepare it when you were born. Before you were born, before your father and mother knew you were coming here, God prearranged a specific plan for you. There are parts you're supposed to be on. There are parts you're supposed to take. There are parts you're supposed to take. Very important. 
You see, you have capacity to multitask. I'll give you an example. You can be working, all right, in a particular organization, and then at the same time be carrying out studies that have nothing to do with the organization you work for. So there's a path for you to work in that organization, and there's a path for you to do, to do, uh, to do the studies that have nothing to do with that organization. But God would have told you to do so. So that means there are two unique paths. One for the company you're working for, another path for, the, for your studies. It can keep on adding on. But what is key is that when you, if you go back to the earlier scripture, what is key is that the word is a lamp unto our feet. So in every area, for example, God has a path for you to follow to meet the person you're supposed to get married to. If God decided before you came that you are going to get married, it's, if you use God's word, the God's word will show you light. Hallelujah. It will be a light to your feet. Where must you go? Hallelujah. It will be a light to your feet. Very important. All right? And you will meet the person you're supposed to marry if you're on the right path. It also means there are some right schools to go to. There are schools you're, you're not supposed to attend. They might be good for other people, but they might not be good for you. For some other people, God might lead them to go into the diaspora. For others, they're not supposed to go into the diaspora. It's very important. You've got to stay in the path that God has given for you. So God's word is a light to your feet and a lamp. Hallelujah. It's a light to your, so it's a light to your feet. Is, and it's also what? A light to your path. Now, since you've got multiple paths, if you feed, now for example, if you, I'll give you an example, if, you, if you're having many health challenges, you start meditating on God's word in line with what? With healing, all right? If you want to be, to, you want, want, want to be a bigger kingdom financier, you start meditating on God's word that develops you into a, how to generate wealth, you understand? So in every path, there's a light, there's a light for, for it, and there's a lamp, there's a light to show you where to go. And that light is in God's word. God's word shows you the way to put your feet. God's word shows you where, which path to follow, which job to take and which job not to take. So if you take every path with a lamp, which is a small light, okay, you're feeding on God's word in, a particular, in that particular path, that particular area. As you feed on God's word in multiple areas, guess what happens? The light of God in every area. If you are feeding on God's word in every area of your life, the small light of a lamp, if you've got two lamps now, the light is bigger. If you've got three lamps, the light is even bigger. So if you're moving on five, seven different paths and you're feeding on God's word in each of those areas, the lights, the individual lights, which are small on their own, together the light increases. And guess what happens? It's like a chandelier. A chandelier, if you take one small light and put it on the roof, it'll be a small light. But if a chandelier, a chandelier has got many other lights, many small lights together in a chandelier give great light. And even the darkest of darkness is, cannot stay. And it goes why? The chandelier is massive. One small lamp can give you light, but it, cannot, it can give you small light for your feet and for a small area of your path. But the various lights in God's word will create a big light that will ensure that there's absolutely no darkness wherever you go, wherever you are. So what is it telling us? Invest in God's word. If you invest in enough in God's word, hallelujah, you follow the right path. And if you're on the right path, you are in the right direction and change and promotion will come. It's impossible to remain the same. The problem is too many people have got one light. light. Like so many single people, especially single sisters, they are obsessed with wanting a husband. That's all they think of. Every seed is for a husband. Every seed is for a husband. Every prayer and fasting is for a husband. Nothing else. So that's just a lamp, a light in the husband department. And after all, God says, why worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, <laughs> what you're going to wear? Your father in heaven knows you need all these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things you desire shall be given unto you. That's God's word. You see, you've got to understand that. So you need to make sure you feed on God's light, on God's word. Now, in many different areas, as you feed on God's word, you are preparing yourself for the future. Now, let's continue. See where we're going right now. Hallelujah. Now, now that you have been feeding on so much of God's word in so many areas. Hallelujah. What's happened? 
The light in you is now a big light. When the gospel says you shall be like a city on a hill that cannot be hid. You are a big light. You cannot be hidden. Why? The more of God's word you feed on, the more grace you get. Hallelujah. Grace and peace are multiplied through your knowledge of God and the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And that knowledge is revealed in God's word. So the more of God's word you are feeding on, hallelujah, the bigger the light and the more grace you have. And if you keep on feeding on that, what happens? There will be better moves, there will be change. You will be transformed. So whether the caterpillar likes it or not, when there's eaten enough leaves, enough, like I said, when you've eaten enough word of God, whether you like it or not, when you've eaten enough word of God, you are going to be metamorphosed. You are going to change to the next level, to the next degree. You're going to be trans- you're going to change, you're going to be trans. Figured, you're going to be transformed. You will shift gears. So the caterpillar will change into a pupa. Hallelujah. Now, interesting. Pupa is stage three. Some people say, some people say, I am overwhelmed. No, no, no. If you're facing many challenges in many areas, feed on God's word in each and every area you are facing a challenge. There's a word of God for every area you face a challenge. There's a word for God. Hallelujah. Now, you see, you cannot be overwhelmed if you feed on God's word. Now, the more of God's word you feed yourself, you are preparing yourself for your future. What do you mean? In the pupa stage, several things happen in the pupa stage of a butterfly. So, So it doesn't matter how challenging a situation you may find yourself in. God's word is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. You can never be hopeless because you've got God's word in you. The word of God you're getting in today is programming you for the future. You see, preparing you for the future. You see, in the first stage, what happens? The caterpillar transforms now into, into a pupa, which has got a hard shell on the outside, egg-like. All right? It's a hard shell, protective on the outside. You cannot see what is inside. It is hard. The pupa is very hard on the outside. And depending on butterfly species, each pupa has got different lengths of how long it will take to, to reach maturity. So to reach uh, so that the, the contents can burst from it. Now, the beautiful part about the pupa stage is that from the outside, it looks like nothing is happening. The pupa is sealed. You can't see inside it. With your normal eyes, you can't see inside it. It is hard. It is protective. The outside covering is protecting what is inside, ensuring that what is inside cannot be destroyed. You see, you have a responsibility to make sure that God's word inside spirit cannot be stolen away from Satan. Satan wants to steal God, wants you, wants you to lose God's word of your heart. And how do you make sure that it's impossible for God's word to be stolen from your heart? We well, showed you at the very beginning when started the series, be prepared, which we did before we shifted to focus on the word. It was very clear. The very first part of what Jesus shared, he said, you must understand God's word. The word of God that you understand, Satan cannot take it away from you. So it's not enough to eat, as, you, as the caterpillar does. It's not enough, for example, to say, I'm going to school. It's not enough. If you go to school as a student, you must... Learn. You must understand. When examinations come, what you understand, you are easily able to, 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 uh, to use to ex- answer the, the examination questions and excel. Students that understand what they were taught will excel in examinations. Students that don't understand what they were taught will not pass examinations. That's why it's important to make sure that you understand. All right? So that you protect that which you have. Right? So, when the caterpillar transformed into a pupa, all the contents that are inside, it pro- they are protected in the pupa. It's a stage whereby, you reach a stage whereby nothing can take away from you what God put in you. Nothing can take away from you. You cannot be cursed. Nobody can steal the word from you. Because why? You understand. Hallelujah. So, like I said earlier on, it looks like nothing is happening from the outside, but great things are happening on the inside. What will be taking place on the inside? You 
see, on the inside, inside the pupa, <laughs> there is changes taking place. Hallelujah. See, inside the pupa, you begin to see the parts of the butterfly. They, will be man they start being developed in there. The legs will be formed. The wings will be formed. The eyes will be formed. All of this will be taking place inside. They will be taking place inside. How do they take place inside? They will be using that which the caterpillar ate. That which was eaten by the caterpillar is what is being used on the inside. So from the outside of the pupa, you can say, ah, there's dark. You can't see what's inside. This thing, ah, there's darkness in the pupa. There is no darkness in the pupa because what was eaten on the, when in the caterpillar stage is busy changing on the inside. Hallelujah. There's a process taking place. Hallelujah. There's a, transform, there's a transformation taking place. That which was eaten is what produces the change on the inside. That's why it's enough, you must make sure you have enough word in every area. Of your life. Be prepared. See, the legs will not form inside the people. The legs of the butterfly won't form if there wasn't enough food eaten by the caterpillar. <laughs> the wings will not form if there's not enough food eaten. Nothing will happen on the inside. But if you eat enough, hallelujah, and if you eat enough, what happens? Formation takes place. Innovation takes place. Inside the pupa, remember, the legs were not there physically. The eyes were not there physically. The butterfly, as you know, it was not there physically. But inside the pupa altogether, what it ate produces what is enough. I mean, the form of the caterpillar is changed. The, shell, the cells that were the, the forming the caterpillar, they transform. They are changed. The change comes from inside. What the caterpillar ate inside is what produces the change that makes it change from a caterpillar to, to, to a pupa. And from inside the pupa, the butterfly is formed. What the, but, what the caterpillar ate is what causes the formation of the butterfly inside the pupa. So it matters what word are you getting. It matters. It matters. It matters. What word are you getting? You see, when people get married, oftentimes the preacher or the marriage officer will say, at the conclusion, they may say, for better, for worse. And they all, they will once again say, yes, we agree, for better, for worse. So you are saying, we are getting married, we expect to have better times and expect to have worse times. So as you have spoken it, it shall manifest so. But we have seen from God's word, we live life from one level of glory to a higher level. So we shouldn't say from better to worse. It should be from glory to glory. Don't let your marriage circumstances be determined what other people have done. From glory to glory. See, what was eaten in the caterpillar stage, the word that you are getting causes the transforming, the metamorphosis to take place inside the pupa, inside so, as you are listening to God's word right now, inside your spirit, if you are understanding God's word, there are changes taking place on the inside. You look the same way like you came to the service. You look the same way like you looked yesterday. But the truth is, because you've been listening to this message, this is now part seven. There have been changes taking place inside you. This is focused on the word part seven. There's many things that have been changed inside you. They've been formed inside you. Faith has come inside you. Innovation has come inside you. Things are happening inside you, Libroshka, Satan. Why? Because God's word brings change, brings renewal. There's a grace working inside you. Suddenly you're beginning to think, hang on, I think I can be a businessman. Hang on, I might not have a degree, but I think I can run a business. Hang on, I, 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 I think I can do this. I think I can do this. Why? Because the word inside you has emboldened you. Even though you're coming from a background that people say is not ideal, the word of God inside you brings about change. Innovation is taking place. Solutions are, take, uh, solutions are in you. People will be amazed when you start talking. They'll be amazed. Hallelujah. Say, is this you? I declare in Jesus' name, your life has shifted. This way you be getting, you are a solution sent. Hallelujah. You have what is needed. Hallelujah. The word inside you, focus on the word. The change you need is produced by the word that's inside you. Inside the pupa. Change is taking place. Taking place. Change is taking place. Where? Inside. Inside. Libroshko soto de boshka sata da boshka. Inside. 
inside you. It's taking place. The word of God. John 3, verse 16, this is from Amplified, a very popular verse of scripture. I think this is probably the most popular, in my view, most well-known verse in the entire Bible, I think. John 3, verse 16, this is from the Amplified Bible. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, will be lost, but will have eternal everlasting life. Hang on. This is the word of God. It's telling us, hang on. If you believe in Jesus, you shall not perish. You shall not come to destruction. You shall not be lost, but you'll have eternal life. Eternal life is the, is the life of God, the God kind of life. God kind of life, which cannot be destroyed. Satan and his demons, whether through coronavirus or COVID-19, it doesn't matter. They cannot destroy you. Why? This is what God's word is telling us. So he said, I can stand. I shall live and not die. My consciousness, I have inside me, I have eternal life. I have the life of God. This is disease destroying, infection destroying life inside me. Hallelujah. That's what I have. I don't get sick. I refuse to be sick. Hallelujah. You speak those words, you are revitalized from inside out. Revitalized inside out. You see? You see? Oh, I'm a nobody. Who told you are a nobody? You are extraordinary. You are a superman. You are a superwoman. Very important. Very, very important. Inside you. Inside you. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse 1. The word inside you. John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the upper Bible class says, In the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. Hallelujah. Next. He was present originally with God. Next. Verse 3. All things were made and came into existence through him. Who is him? The word. So as I'm teaching you God's word, all things were made through the word. So the word of God, what is it that you want? Hallelujah. Made through the word. As you are feeding God's word, bring up, watch. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, that is the word, and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. See, the word of God in your spirit altogether makes you a creator, makes you a solution center, makes you innovative. Why? The word of God. Feed on the God's word. Feed on God's word. Feed on God's word. Next verse. Feed on God's word. Inside you. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. Hallelujah. That's why. And the light shines on in the darkness. The light shines on in the darkness. For the darkness is never overpowered it. Put it out or absorbed it or, ap or approved it and is unreceptive to it. The light shines on in darkness. So the word of God you are getting, there can never be darkness. Nothing was made without the word. Everything was made through the word. Hallelujah. So the word of God you are feeding on. So is that butterfly is changing inside the pupa. What is happening? Through the word. The development is taking place through the word. Hallelujah. Don't miss next week's Sunday. As we conclude this series, focus on the word. We conclude it powerfully. You are going to be so mightily blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I get it close right now, for the Lord is making clear right now, there's change taking place in you. There's change taking place in you. There is change taking place in you. That which was broken is being fixed right now. That situation which was hopeless is, be, is being made is being made well. It's being turned around. There's a turnaround taking place in your life for good right now. There's a turnaround taking place in your finances. There's a turnaround taking place in your health. There's a turnaround taking place in your business. There's a turnaround taking place in your family. There's a turnaround taking place. Hallelujah. You know, taking place right now. There's a turnaround. Hallelujah. 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 There's a turnaround taking place. Revitalization is taking place right now. Yes, I know there's some people that are watching right now. Some of you are watching right now. You, 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 some of you, some of you are watching right now. You are in quarantine. 
Some of you have been diagnosed with COVID-19. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Right now, there's change taking place. There's change taking place. That infection leaves your body right now. Librosco soto de bo. Supernatural hallelujah. Librosco soto de bo. The next test they're doing, they want to show you that is that infection has left you. It's a shock. Yes. Right now, if you have any relative who is in a critical medical situation, it might be COVID-19 sickness, it might be another sickness, whatever it is, and see hopeless right now. As I speak these words, life is coming right now. I'm going to speak right now, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I declare that relative, that close person of yours will not die in Jesus' name. They shall live and not die. There are a miracle happening right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. I see someone with a child, seven-year-old child that's in a coma in hospital right now. In the name of Jesus, restoration is taking place right now. That child of yours will not die in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Changes come. Changes come. Changes come. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself next week, Sunday. We conclude this series. And uh, indeed, we will minister to people as well. We'll minister to people as well. We will minister. Hallelujah. God is not limited by distance. Hallelujah. Don't miss next week's Sunday service. Meditate on all these verses, on all these scriptures and this message we've been teaching. Again, the link is on your screen. Our YouTube link is on the screen right now. Go and feed on. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself. Things are happening inside you. <laughs> things are happening inside you. Good things are taking place. Good things are taking place. Good things are taking place. Revise. Make sure I get understanding in Jesus' name of God's word. Hallelujah. Get understanding. And that short reform will be formed, will be created, will be made. Hallelujah. Things are happening. You make things from the inside out. Thank you so much for all of you that have been watching us right now. If you're not born again, if you don't know Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, I encourage you right now, repeat these words after me and you'll be born again. Say from today, Jesus is the Lord, the boss of my life. He died on the cross, was buried and resurrected. But he lives in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. With those words, my brothers and sisters, you are born again. He lives in you. He resurrected from the grave, yes. He ascended to heaven, but he lives in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are born again. Hallelujah. I would encourage you to get in touch with us in the corner details on our screens right now. And uh, please, get in touch with us. We would love, hallelujah, we would love to, to send you some material that will help you to grow in the Christian faith. Hallelujah. And if you're already born again and you're watching the service, and you're blessed in the service, please contact us as well. Let us know how we were blessed. We would really love to hear from you. And I also want to encourage you, do not miss out. Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from 6.30 p.m. to 6.40 p.m. For 10 minutes only, we have a 10 minutes live online broadcast of the Word of God. Hallelujah. It is so powerful. You'll be mightily, mightily, mightily blessed. Hallelujah. And uh, you don't miss the, the programs. And they are available on the same links that you're getting this service right now. That is from 6.30 p.m. to 6.40 p.m. GMT plus two. That's Johannesburg, South Africa time. You don't want to miss those services. And every Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. for 45 minutes, we have our Word at Work Wednesday live midweek service broadcast. And we are currently doing the series, Do or Die. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. In the Boats of Wisdom series I talked about earlier, we're currently in the series, Forward Ever, Backward Never. Hallelujah. It's very important that when you're in service, you must always give your offerings, give your seed offerings, give your tithes. As the host guide you, do God's word. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, right now on your screens, you see our banking details for you to do EFT, electronic file transfer. You can do it without delay. Hallelujah. And into the church bank account. You can also give directly into 
online right now on a very secure platform. The link is on your screen right now. And become a partner with us. Partner with us financially. Hallelujah. You are sowing in fertile ground and you reap bountifully. So don't miss next week's Sunday service as we conclude this series. And indeed, our pray and minister and speak words and guides us to all people on that platform. Don't miss out. It's a very special, very special time in service in the Lord. Hallelujah. And with that right now, let us share the grace. I encourage you, remember, you're moving in the right direction. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.